In this particular tutorial, we will learn how to install IBM DB2 11.5.8 on Reddit Enterprise Linux 9.1, which is also called as Rail 9.1. To install DB2, first what you need to do is you need to download the DB2 Community Edition from the IBM website. Now, if this is for your work, probably you might install download the db2 server edition or the db2 advanced enterprise edition based on your requirement you might want to but this is this is a tutorial so i'll be installing the db2 community edition and just for your information the db2 the steps which are mentioned here are exactly same so you will you will follow the same steps if, if you want to do this in your work environment like if you want to if you want to install the db2 server edition or workgroup edition or advanced edition then you will follow the exact same procedure now before downloading the db2 community edition you need to make sure you need to have an ibm id if you don't have one create one the ibm id can be your one of your personal email accounts whatever you use and if it is for work sign up using your work email account once you have your ibm id Log in with your IBM ID and download the DB2 Community Edition. Once the software is downloaded, transfer the software to the target machine. Uh, in my case, the Red Hat Enterprise Linux 8.1, sorry, 9.1, and then unzip the software. Once you unzip the software, you will find an utility called DB2 Install. You will find a utility called DB2 Install. Use this particular utility to install the DB2. Once the DB2 is installed, the next step is to create the instance. To create the instance, DB2 instance, what you need to do is you need to have an instance owner account, user ID. So an, an user ID is a must on operating system. So you need to f f create an user, user account on the Unix environment or Linux environment. And that user will become the instance owner. Remember, the inst the user that you specify in the in the db2 i create the db2 i create command would be used to create the instance whatever inst username that you specify becomes the instance owner so first you create the user id on the target machine and once you create the user id then you use the command called db2 i create to create the instance once the instance is created it's time to switch to that particular instance. To do that, you will say switch to DB2 instance SU minus DBP. So when you switch to that particular user account, automatically you are connected to that particular instance. And to start the DB2 instance, you will run the command start DB, DB2 start. So DB2 start command will start the DB2 instance. Now, once the instance is started, it's time to create your database. To create the database, you will use the command called create database. And once the, the database is created, you will use the command connect to to connect to the database. Now, remember that to create the database, your instance needs to be up and running. So you need to make sure that your instance is started using the db2 start command. If the instance is not running, then your create database command will fail. And once the database is created, you will connect to the database using connect to statement. Now, these are the detailed steps. So to install the db2 software, as I mentioned, you will use a utility called db2 underscore install. So what you need to do is you need to transfer the software to your target machine where you want to install it. Then unzip that particular software you I'm using the. So basically it's a gzip file, gz file. So I'll be using the single command which will actually extract and then untar this particular file into this particular directory. Under this particular directory, you will find a a directory called server dash that's the directory which is created because of this unzip then under that you will find a utility called db2 install use this particular utility to install the db2 software now it's time to create the db2 instance remember i told you to have the instance owner id so in my case dbp is the instance owner id now i'm um, the why we are specifying it two times one time it is the fence user one time it is the instance owner now in this is a demo so i'm using the same id for fence user and the instance owner but in your production environment try to make sure that fence user id is different than the 
actual instance owner so you will go to this particular location this particular location will automatically be created once the db2 is installed so once the db2 is installed you will go to this particular location under this particular location you will find a utility called db2 i create that's the utility that we will use to create our db2 instance now once the instance is created you will sw switch to that particular instance so su minus dbp command will switch to that particular instance so you, whatever this is actually a linux command so you are saying switch user to the instance owner id so in my case it's a dbp so i'm switching to this particular id and then once you are switched you are actually connected to that particular instance and i'll show you that when we do the actual demo then you will say db2 start to start the instance and then once you st start the instance you should see that automatically a process called db2cc process started if the db2cc process is started then probably your instance is up and running now the next part is to create your database so, so to create your database you'll say db2 create database now whatever name of the database that you'll say so db name in my case i'm using the test so db2 create database test and then list the database directory will actually give you the databases which are hosted on that particular instance now this particular command is within so whatever these commands are are effected only within that particular instance so if you have multiple instances you have to make sure you switch to that particular instance using this particular command now we are not going to go into those details how to create multiple instances and etc etc but this is a tutorial just to install the db2 software create your instance create the database now once you have created the database it's time to connect to your database so you'll say connect to db name so in my case connect to test and get connection state will tell you whether you are connected or not so that was a short tutorial let's start with our actual exercise so let me let me connect to our box so i don't need this let me connect to our box using the putty so i'm connected using the root so first thing that we need to do is uh, we need to download the software so let's go to the uh, whatever browser you use and let's say download ibm db2 so let's say download this now you you will get multiple links click on this db2 database pricing uh and then you can see download ibm db2 software community edition this is what we are going to download so let's download this now again as i mentioned you might have to uh, log in i am already logged in so you know it doesn't prompt me this now what i'm going to do is i'm going to say no continue and let's wait for it and here you can see that i got this particular links i'm going to choose because we are going to do this on linux i'm going to choose linux x64 which is close to 1.9 gb it's a it's close to 2 gb software so it's a pretty big software make sure you download this well in advance and keep it so that you don't have to so you click the download and it's it's it will start downloading in the background so it has started downloading now i have already downloaded this particular software so i'm not going to download this particular software again so i'm going to cancel this our work on the firefox is done so i'm going to close this and i'm going to go to my putty session what i'm going to do now is i'm going to transfer that particular software as i mentioned the first thing i need to do is i need to transfer that particular software so I'm going to transfer that particular software. So first thing, I, I have already downloaded a particular software. I'm going to show you that particular location. So let me go to this particular location, do ls minus L, and you can see I got all of these particular softwares on my machine. I have already downloaded 11.4, 11.57, etc., etc., the Windows and Linux version. So now th this is the one we are going to use, the developer community edition 11.5.8 the linux version so i'm going to use this particular software and what i'm going to do is i'm going to use the tar command to extract that particular software directly so before doing that let me let me do something so let me go to that particular location and i'll show you that particular location is completely empty it has got no directories i'm under dbe now let me go back to this particular location i've gone there and i'm going to use this particular command which will extract that particular software and while it is doing that I'm, i'll open one more putty session here and i'll go to that particular location and this particular location was empty and you can see a folder called or directory called server dash appeared now let me go to that particular directory inside that particular directory and you should be able to see a utility called db2 install 
this is the utility that we will be using to install the db2 now let's wait for okay that antar command is completed so now let's close this another window we don't need that so now clear the screen and go to that particular location and ls minus l and under this server desk this is the extracted directory and under this you found db2 install let's use this particular utility so i'm going to say db2 install so let's clear the screen make this a little big so that you know whatever command i run we should be able to see so i'm going to use db2 install and it says one of the you know 32 bit i'm using 64 bit and it's complaining i i'm going to ignore this particular warning so if if you accept the terms as yes, we 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 are going to accept the terms without which we cannot install the software so i'm going to say yes the default directory now if you you have the choice to change the directory you can use the default directory or you can use the directory of your choice so you can change it or you can use the default directory i'm going to keep the default directory so i'm going to say yes and server connect server client or runtime client so i'm going to say server i want to install the server so i'm going to say server i'm going to type server do you want to install db2 pure scale feature now i'm not going to install the db2 pure scale feature so i'm going to say no and again it complained about you know a missing uh prerequisite file 32 bit and as i said i'm going to ignore that so if you see in the background the db2 install has started now based on how how fast your processor and your memory is how fast your computer is or your machine is it might take few minutes to few few seconds to few minutes to few hours you know it it, it wouldn't take hours definitely unless it gets hanged in between it should either take a few seconds to few minutes so uh, we are we are already on 48 step and within few seconds it should be able to complete this now what i'm going to do i'm going to run a command called db2 ls let's see you know and you can see that this particular command is not found db2 ls failed to find this particular command so when i ran the db2 ls command it did not give an output now let's see what happens and the installation is completed now let's let me run the same command once again and you can see that you know so previously when i run that ran that command i got a message command not found and i ran the exact same command and then i got this particular output now i'll go i'm going to explain what is this but you see the installation is completed with warnings some warnings are there and again i'm going to ignore those particular warnings uh and and if you want to see the, what are those warnings you can actually look at those warnings so i'm going to you can actually take a look at what 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 are those warnings so you know most of them are success um so yeah so what is okay I, I don't see anything significant so i'm going to yeah error occurred so okay so it could not install tsa mp and that was the that is the that is the because of that it gave that particular warning and i'm okay with that i don't i don't i'm not i'm not going to use the tsa mp feature so i'm okay and uh, and i'm going to and our installation is successful whatever we are going to do is is going to work so now what is this db2 ls command db2 ls command actually shows all of the db2 installation so you if you have db2 11.1 or any other versions of db2 installed it will show you the all of these versions so i'm going to i'm going to run this particular command one more time and you know it it will look a little pretty so you can see we have got we have installed the and it will show you the installation path what level you are what fix pack and when it was installed so it is a pretty info pretty good uh, command and it tells you you know and the beauty is you can install multiple 11.5 versions so if you you know if you want to install um multiple 11.5 versions, same versions in a multiple directories but you have to make sure that directory is different you can't use the same directory to install so you can install you can you can install different versions of the db2 on the same machine or you can also install the same version so 11 you can install 11.1 11.5 on same or you can have even multiple 11.5 that's possible and the db2 ls command shows you the shows you what kind of what um what are the different db2 products which are installed on your machine pretty useful and 
Once we have verified the DB2 is installed, now it's time to create the DB2 instance. Now, before doing that, I told you that, you know, you need to have an user ID on your machine. So I'm going to use a user ID called DBP. I have already created it. So you can see that it's a user ID called DBP, which I have already created. I can run a command called IB, ID DBP. So DBP is a user ID. It's part of this particular group called DBA. And that particular user ID is already created. But if you don't have the user ID created, you need to you need to uh, go ahead and create one. This particular user ID will we will use this particular user ID to create our DB2 instance. Now, if you want to create multiple instances, then you need to have multiple users. So based on how many instances you want to create, you will you will uh, you you want to you should have multiple users. So let's let's now concentrate on dbp and we have just installed the db2 there is no instance at all on this particular machine so there is no instance at all on this particular machine so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to i'm going to go to a directory where we installed the db2 so this is where we have installed so i'm going to go to that particular directory so let's say cd that particular directory and under this particular directory you should be able to find a file called db2 i create so no under this you should be able to find a folder called instance and under that instance you should be able to find a utility called db2 i create now let's let me explain again so i am under the directory this is the directory where you have installed the db2 under this you should be able to find a folder called a directory called instance under this instance directory you should be able to find uh, another utility called db2 i create you can see that we got a utility called db2 i create here and we are going to use this particular utility to create our instance so the command to do that would be so i'm, I'm going to say db2 i create minus u dbp dbp now first is the fence user second is the instance user and as i mentioned in your production environment, try to make sure that the fence user is different than your user actual instance owner. Do not try to use, but this is a demo. So I'm going to use both as the, as the same user. And as you can see, the instance is right now getting created. So we are creating an instance called dbp. Again, this particular command says it says that it will take 300 seconds, which is close to six minutes, 306 into sorry five into so it's five minutes five into 60 yeah five into 60 uh is five minutes but you know it hardly took few seconds and our instance is created now once our instance is created it's time to switch to our instance so how do you do that you use su command which is a linux command switch user and the instance name which is dbp and now if i run the db2 i list command you can see that dbp instance is already created now what if i try to create another instance with the same name and this time it will fail why okay you can see the program this program failed and the reason of this is you know the reason why this particular command failed is because the, the we already have an instance now if you want to create another instance now if you want to create another instance you need to make sure you have another user id you can't use the same user id so let's try to see if we have got any other user id on our machine so let's grab for you know grab for oracle let's say if we have an user id called oracle and we have an user id called oracle let's use the user id called oracle to create a second db2 instance let's do that so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to say okay and before doing that let me let me show it to you something you know i'm going to switch to i'm going to switch to this particular instance i'm going to run a command called db2 i list and you can see i'm i'm under the, there is only one instance and if i say db2 get instance which instance i'm connected to and it can show it shows that i'm connected to instance called dbp now what i'm going to do i'm going to create this particular another instance called oracle and let's give it a minute or so it, it won't take a minute it will take few seconds literally so be, be again based on your system it might take few seconds to few minutes so execution completed successfully and now i'm going to run the same command db2 i list 
you can see that we have got two instances called one is called oracle one is called dbp however i am still connected to instance called dbp now how do i connect to an oracle simple you launch another session and switch to that particular user id and this time if i run a command called db2 get instance if i run this particular command here under the oracle user you can see that i should be connected to the instance called oracle now i'm 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 now we have got two instances you as you can see from the db2 i list command we have got two instances one is dbp and one is oracle all good now let's see if these instances are running so ps minus ef grep db2 cc so db2 cc is the process which actually shows whether and you can see none of our instances are currently running so both of our instances are not running so now i'm going to say db2 start now before doing the db2 start i'm going to do something i'm going to say create database test i'm going to say create database test and when i run this particular command it's going to fail and the reason for that is our instance is not running so if the instance is not running we will not be able to create our database so now you can see no start database manager command was issued the literally it means that our instance is not running so our command failed our command failed now what i'm going to do is i'm going to use the command called db to start to start the instance and once that is done i'm going to now run this particular command and you can see that we should now have one instance called db to cc under dbp so we have one instance called db to cc uh, sorry one instance called dbp and the db2 cc process is started now i'm going to run the exact same command which i ran here i'm going to run the exact same command and this time that particular command is going to get successful now before doing that before running creating the database i'm going to tell you something when we run this particular command it will we will not be able to understand if it is really creating a database or not we won't be able to see anything on the screen we won't be able to really understand if if it's doing something in the background or not so let's do one thing let's open another session and there will be a there will be a switch to instance user and run a command called db2 diag minus f f for follow db2 diag means follow the alert log the db2 alert log for this particular instance now every instance has got its own alert log so an instance with name called oracle has got its own alert log an instance with the dbp has got its own alert log alert log error log diagnostic log whatever you name it it's the same log it it's a pretty much your first thing if something is not happening right it is the first thing that you should look at is that db2 diag log and all that i'm saying follow this particular log and you can see right now you know it's it's almost it's, it's not moving it's not moving it's okay and i'm going to do something i'm going to i'm going to do something i'm going to hit this create test database test command and keep an eye on this this log will start moving and that will tell us that in background in the background our database is getting created so let's do that and you can see that database test initializing log writing services and you know here you can see as i told you when i press enter i can't literally see whether it's really doing something or not and only by following the db2 diag log file error log diagnostic log whatever you call it i'm now able to see that in the background db2 is doing something and it's actually in turn creating the database you can see db is equal to test so it's creating the database called test now what i should have done is i should have actually shown one more command called db2 list db directory which actually shows whether there is a database on this particular machine or not and i'll i'll, I'll do that in oracle instance so let's and you can see that the log has stopped moving and the database is created so now there is no activity happening within the db2 the database is created now let's verify using a command called db2 list db directory so db2 list db directory let's run this particular command and you can see 
that there is a database called test. Now, let me run the same command in an instance called Oracle. And here it will show that the entry is empty. That is the database directory cannot be found. That means that the database, these two instances, although they are on the same machine, are two different instances. The, the database that you created is within the instance called dbp. So you are you are within instance called dbp and I, you can use the db2get instance command and that's why you are able to see the database called test. However, if I run the exactly same command in the Oracle instance, you can't see that particular database, which means they are two different instances. The, the database is within the instance. So understand this bigger picture. Now, if I have to put it into the paint if i have to put it in the paint this is your operating system so this is your operating system under operating system you have instance one you have instance two and under that you have multiple databases so there is this database has no connection to this or this instance has no connection to this this so database is within the instance and instance is within the install install db2 install and where do you install the db2 on the operating system so this is your operating system this is your instance let me this is your so let me take an arrow so this is your uh, this is your instance these are your databases this is your another instance this is your another databases now hope this picture is clear so now i'm going to i'm, I'm not going to bother about oracle and what i'm going to do now i'm going to try to create one more database and this time I'm going to say first one, two, three, four. Now this command is going to fail. Now this command exactly looks same like before db2 create database test and that got successful. However, this command is going to fail. And the reason for that is pretty simple. db2 does not allow you to create a database with a name longer than eight characters the maximum is eight and in this the name is eight nine characters f i r s t which is five plus one two three four four five plus four is nine and this command is going to fail you can see first one two three four is not a valid database name so don't try to create a database with more than eight characters db2 does not allow it so now i'm going to run the same command and i'm going to remove that extra four to make it 5 plus 3 which is 8 and this time that particular command is going to get successful and once that particular database is created when i run the db2 and you can see number of entries in this particular directory is 1 once i create this particular database and run this particular command the db2 list db directory you should be able to see that i have got two databases one is called test database one is called first one two three now let's hit the button and the log would have started and you can see db called first one two three is getting created in the background now the database is is created so we have sorry the database second is getting created now we don't have to wait for the second database to get created we can still connect to the first database it won't allow us to create connect to the second database but let's try let's control c this and let's try to connect to before it gets created connect to first one two three and it won't allow us to connect you can see the operation failed however it will definitely allow us to connect to test database you can see i'm able to why did it not allow us to connect to first one two three because it's in the restrictive mode it's in the qs mode it because that is it's getting created it won't allow us to create now if i run the same command i should be able to connect to the first one two three which failed here because the database you can see here the database create database command completed so let's run this particular command and i am able to connect to my first one two three now let me so how to terminate from your session database connection you will say connect reset and how to connect to your database you will run a command called db2 so let's let's run one simple command before so here as i told you that when i run ran the db2 list db directory you can see there is only one database i'm going to run i'm going to run the exactly same command once more and this time you should be able to see that we have got two databases so from one we got two databases one is called test database one is called first one two three so we have two databases in our instance nothing in oracle we have both the databases are under the dbp nothing in oracle now let's let's how to connect to our database so you will say db2 connect to test 
and we have connected successfully and now if i want to you know if i want to check whether i'm connected or you know you can use the db2 get connection state and you can see connect table and connected now if i run the command db2 connect reset which means i'm going to disconnect from my connection and that's done i'm going to run the same command db2 get connection state and this time i won't get the all of this i won't get the connected so let's see so connectable and unconnected you can see i got unconnected and there is no database information here i was connected to test database in a shared mode now i'm not connected to any database now our database is also created and we are now going to connect back to our database so connect to test and what i'm going to do now is i'm going to create first table so db2 create table let's say employee and you know uh, with column name so let's say first column name is employee id which is the type i integer and the second column is employee name which is care six and our table is created now let's select the record from this particular employee table now it will have no records because we just created it let's insert our first employee insert into employee values one comma first employee is rock and he joined our organization and let's take a look at his record so we have first employee called rock in our organization that's all good so once our work is done we are going to disconnect from our database using db2 connect reset that's all for today's tutorial so i'm going to repeat what we covered here so literally we learned you know we first downloaded the software then we used the db2 install to install the software then we used the db2 i create to create the instance then we use the switch users to switch to the particular instance. We use the command db2 start to start the instance. We use the create database command to create the database. And we use the connect to data command to connect to our database. I hope you found this particular tutorial useful. Thank you for watching and see you in next tutorial. Thank you. Bye bye.